we're back. This is Elliot Serrano and Jose Melendez coming to you from Dreamland Comics in Schaumburg, Illinois. Thank you for joining us here yet again on the Comic Culture Warrior YouTube channel. And we are now at the part that we call Last Rants, where Jose and I, you know, reflect on things we've talked about before in these segments or in previous segments. Reflect. Reflect. Re revisit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Or just uh, talk about something completely different, but um, I Which wanted we normally to, end up doing really. I wanted to just real quick um, because you guys, uh, some of you keep mentioning this board, uh, this book on the boards. Uh, Captain Britain and MI13 number twelve came out. It's the second part of the. Um, well, technically, the third. Third part, right? There's a prologue, right. then the first part, and the of the of the Dracula's vampire invasion of Great Britain. And uh, you talk about cliffhangers, like in The Sword. Yeah. This book had an awesome cliffhanger. And again, Paul Cornell is just writing an awesome, awesome book. And I'm reading it, and I get really, really jealous that he's able to do so much with so little text. You know, the characters don't really, like, jibber-jabber a whole lot and talk. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a minimalist feel to it, but you really get a lot about the characters through their... And, um, of course, uh, Leonard Kirk is doing the book. And I he... wish some other writers would learn how to do that. <laughs> in, in either case. So, um, last rant. There's another thing. Uh, I had actually shared this with you via uh, an email. Um, Warren Ellis uh, had caught that the last episode of Dollhouse, that's the Eliza Dushku, Joss Whedon vehicle, 13 episodes were commissioned by Fox for the first season. And according to Warren Ellis, uh, via an interview with one of the actresses on the show, only 12 episodes will actually be aired, which does not bode well for the show. If you're only going to show 12 episodes out of a 13-episode season, that means the show's not going any further. And wasn't it something like the episode that they're going to end with wasn't supposed to be not the season finale. Like they're, the, right. they're not even going to show the season finale. And then the only way you can see the season finale is when they put it out on the DVD, DVD, which is pretty shitty because the only way that you, the fans would be able to say, hey, Fox, fuck you, is not to buy the DVD. Not buy the DVD. But, you know, I would have to be like, I kind of would like to see how it ends. Yeah. So you can't win either way. Or maybe they could. it would be nice if they'd like put it on Hulu or something so you can see it there. That's true. But again, Joss Whedon getting fucked by Fox. At least they actually showed, they're going to show 12 episodes yeah. instead of like the 6 or 7 of Firefly. But, you know, and the thing there too, I think the, the, the problem that I think Joss Whedon now is running into, and this is the second show that he's created, and they, Fox, from what I understand... Well, third been, show, really. Third show? Angel. Angel. No, I'm saying the second show is created for Fox. Right. Where he created Firefly for Fox, that show barely made it through a season, done. Um, things could change, and we could be completely misinterpreting this, but um, this could be it for Dollhouse as well. Second show he's created for Fox, although in this case, with Dollhouse, he apparently got a lot more support from the executives for the show, mm -hmm. and they let him do a lot of what he wanted to do, and yet the show is not taking off. And even the most diehard Joss Whedon fans are having a hard time, you know, kind of watching it. Really? I mean, I haven't heard. I mean, I, I hear a lot of, don't get me wrong, I hear a lot of Joss Whedon fans really defending the show. They're out there talking about support the show, watch the show, and so on. But the whole Joss Whedon fan base, I don't think, has been rallying around the show because otherwise it wouldn't be struggling like it has. And, you know, I know I'm going to tick off some people. I know there are going to be some Joss Whedon fans out there who are saying, well, of course, you know, the Whedon Knights have supported the show and, and so forth. Well, if they did, maybe then the Whedon fan base isn't as formidable as well, everyone wants Whedon to think it is. Well, the Whedon fan base rallied around Firefly, too, and the same thing happened. So I don't think yep. you can blame them. Oh, no, I'm not saying blame. I don't think blame is an issue. I just think that it's the reality is, as we talked about, like, with Watchmen, okay, mm -hmm. Watch the the comic book geeks went out and saw the movie. We saw it in droves, but yeah. it just wasn't enough to support the show. Right. I mean, to support a movie and make it a, a huge blockbuster. Right. Maybe Josh Whedon's fan base now just is not enough to support one of his shows. He needs to do his well, stuff so it's more widely appealing. 
Kevin Smith is a, has a, a cult following too, but his Clerks animated series went nowhere. But that was yeah. so much. That was a long time ago. I know it was a long time ago, but it just goes back to saying there are these people who have. Okay, let's face it. In comics, you it's easier to be a bigger fish because it's a small pond. When you get right. out of comics and you go into television and movies, you're not as big a fish. Right, and maybe Joss Whedon's just not that big a fish. I never, I see. I don't think that he is. He should be, but and it's easily, you just said in the comic book industry, he has the number top. He has the number ten best selling book in the industry. And, and, and that's in the higher. case when he's not writing it too. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't write every issue, but right. it's his name and it's his property. And those are the fans that are buying the book, and the fans are making that book. Successful. And so it's easier for the fans to be heard on that level of comics than when you get the TV. And it's a shame because do- the last two episodes of Dollhouse have been awesome. Oh, no. They, I mean, they have been, been really pretty good. incredible. And a lot of the concerns, or actually a lot of the criticisms I had of the show were, were addressed very well in the last two episodes. Yes. When yep. you really got into the mindset of the characters and the justifications they have for doing what they do. Mm-hmm. And I mean, of course, I still don't like any of them. But although, but the cat, the, the 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 twist that they did with Catherine, who is the woman who leads the dollhouse, I didn't see that coming, and that right. it kind of made her a sympathetic character, and she oh, really it's making her more right. I'm mean, a lot more sympathetic because she's actually not all there, and it's, and again, it, it's getting into this whole gray area where they kind of got into in the Pat Oswald episode, yes, where it's they're helping lonely people cope, right. You know, so they, and, and in some ways they they seem they they see themselves as you know to be commended for doing that, right. but the methods in which they're doing it, right. really they really shouldn't be commended for doing right. it at all. No, because even I mean, even prostitutes and pimps feel that they're doing a service. I mean, right. I mean, even prostitutes think that they are doing something to better the world. And they keep alluding to this. This isn't what the dollhouse is about. Right. There, there's just there's this whole other layer of what it's supposed to be about mm-hmm. and actually what it's doing. Because you, you found out in the last few episodes that there's dollhouses all over the world. All over the world. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. And that there is there's a higher purpose for it. Right. Which hopefully they'll get to before they cancel the show. Maybe, but maybe. you know, again, it's it's a good show, and it's I, I don't know, it's.